Hello, so today I'm going to do a quick initial review on the Radia Code 102. Now, to make it obvious which one's the 101, I've labelled that in the background as 101. So the 102 is the one without the label on it. But they look pretty damn similar. So, if you're familiar with the Radia Codes, um, basically, Radia Scan and Radia Code, they are a company that used to be based in Russia. They're based in Cyprus now. Now, I won't get too much into politics in this video, but we all know what's gone on recently involving the Russian Federation and why it's bad for lots of Russian businesses and everything else. So, they're now based in the EU. They're not based in Russia anymore. So, you know, there's at least a company that, you know, used to make lots of this cool old tech that's around again. And when I say cool old tech, you know, I'm referring to obviously the Cold War um, equipment. Obviously this is modern, but you know what I mean. So anyway, the the main differences between the 101 and the 102, the 102 is basically the improved model. So because I like the 101, I'm going to say I immediately like the 102. From what I've played around with it, it's the 101, but better. If you want a little TLDR, it's the 101, but better, the 102. But let's get into that. So firstly, the sensitivity is a bit higher. So if you look at the um, CPM on both of them, you'll probably notice the 102 is a bit higher. And that's because it's just more sensitive in general. Now, I think that's only, it was explained to me in certain radiation ranges, you know, energy ranges. But for the most part, you know, the 102 will pick up stuff the 101 won't. You know, and if you have them both next to each other, the 102 tends to get a better spectrum. The 102 is also meant to have a slightly stronger plastic body. Um, a thing they didn't mention to me, but if you listen to them clicking individually, the 102 sounds a bit more like a classic Geiger counter click. I think it's a little bit bassier, but that's basically it. From the outside, the 102 just has its speaker, um, I think, about there. Whereas the 101 is about halfway along the case. But for the most part, they're very, very similar units. So if you've watched my review of the 101 and you know I recommended it, then the 102 is like the current production one and you'd also like it. But yeah, so what I'm going to do now is demonstrate it a bit in use. I'll turn the 101 off for this because you only really need to see the 102 doing stuff. And then I'm going to do a much more thorough video later on using the app and everything else. Um, explaining lots of the features for people who haven't watched the 101 video, you know, want to know everything from scratch. But um, let's just see the 102 in action and all the cool shit it does. Now, like an idiot, I just noticed I didn't actually have the speaker on for the 102. So that's what the 102 sounds like. I'll just hold it a bit closer to the camera's microphone. Okay, so this is what the unit looks like. It's basically, compared to the size of your hand, it's pretty small. Um, exact same size, I think, externally to the 101. But as I said, the only difference is the speaker on the 102 is at the top, whereas the 101 I know about there. But um, that's about it as far as I can tell in terms of like the casing differences. I think the plastic looks a bit more matte rather than shiny on the 102, but that might just be me and it might just be due to age on my um, 101. So when they sent it me, and again, I don't know if you'd get this in the normal package, I got one of these little belt loop cases for it, and one of these almost like armband cases for it, depending on how you want to carry it. Um, personally though, with this and the 101, I just literally put them in a button-up or zip-up pocket, because if you want to take readings, that's all you have to do. The meat is obviously going to be easy to clean for external contamination kind of stuff. So first of all, if you don't know much about spectrometers or scintillation counters, if you know what a Geiger counter is, and I'm not going to explain everything to Geiger counters in this video, they're basically Geigers, but more sensitive. So they pick up, you know, smaller amounts of radiation. So if you were using one of these in a Geiger counter, this would know when there was exposure, say, for gamma radiation before a Geiger would. So as it works, generally in the old sort of school of things, a spectrometer, or sorry, not spectrometer, I'll get into spectrometry in a moment, but um, a scintillation counter picks up radiation from the furthest away. Geiger counters like the medium range one, and then if you want to um, you know, take readings of very high radiation levels, you would use an ionization chamber. But again, the thing is with radiation levels, and like, you know, radiation detectors and everything like that, as the technologies improve to detect radiation, um, you can have ionization chambers that work to very low, like sensitive levels, like some of those um, more modern Victorine ones I have. 
that you know can do the Millie Ronkin range on an actual uh, ionization chamber. But what makes a spectrometer interesting, um, as I've said, scintillation counter, so it's a scintillation counter how it detects radiation, but it's also a spectrometer. And what makes a spectrometer interesting, if I just get it up and then I'll flip it to you, we have a thing called a spectrum. So what this shows you, if I make sure it's the right way up for the camera, there we go, and I'll zoom in on it a bit, is the spectrum shows you the energy um, in frequencies of the radiation itself, the ionizing radiation. So what it's picking up there is basically the background sort of regular sort of thing. Now when we expose a check source to this, you'll see how the spectrum starts to rapidly change. But the point of a spectrometer in very basic English is it knows what radiation you're being exposed to. And if you get the app for this on your phone, and they do it for both Apple and Android, you can actually export the um, little thing to your phone in real time. And it will say, oh, that's cesium-137, or that's probably cobalt-60 based on where the spikes are in the thing. So you don't need to actually know them yourself. Um, if you get into radioactive things, you will start recognising certain spikes in certain areas on the thing. Uh, but that's basically that. So, for a layman, what this does is it will tell you what radiation in terms of x-rays and gamma rays you're um, being exposed to and how dangerous they are. There's another function on this, is the dose function. So if we go to that, the dose shows you what you've been exposed to so far since you last reset it. So obviously, since I started this video, it has not been exposed to 21.6, I think that is, millironcan, looking at that, or 21.9, depending on which way up that six is, but um, the point is that, you know, you can reset that and it more accurately tells you x-rays and gamma rays compared to a Geiger counter because it can actually tell the spectrum of the energy hitting it, uh, unlike a Geiger counter which basically just counts every pulse as whatever it's been calibrated on. So what we're going to do now is to demonstrate it works, I'm going to get a couple of different samples and we'll see if we can see the spectrum update. But as I said, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, TLDR, um, I definitely recommend this. If you like the Radioscan 101, it's basically that, but slightly improved. So I like the 101, it's the 101, but better. So um, let's get on to um, some samples. Right, so there I have the phone with the Spectrum app, just to give you a quick example. And here I have one of my weakest samples, but of one of the most deadly things on Earth, Cobalt 60. Now, a lot of my Geiger counters can even barely pick the sample up, but if we put it on top of the radio code, as I'm sure you can hear, it's actually picking that up. And then in a second, we can have a look at the spectrum. And I said, I'll try and show you this using screenshots and better things in a full size video. But the point is that in a moment, because we've got on logarithmic scale rather than linear scale, it'll start seeing various spikes. And that's just setting the alarm off now because it's slightly over the threshold for it, but we'll ignore that for now. And we should see when the proper spikes on the spectrum start forming. Now it's cobalt 60. Yeah, there we go, cobalt 60, because that's the one of the spikes that's growing now properly on the spectrum. If the camera wants to focus on it, there you go, see CO60. But yeah, this is managing to pick up a reading. Um, let's put it back on the um, other mode, because I'm on, um, so the cumulative dose on my, so let's go to monitor. There you go, you can see that's much higher than it used to be. If I flick the camera around. There's also a monitor mode, which is pretty useful. Or, oh, sorry, the, um, search mode, that's it, because that way you can see where you're um, getting higher readings than before. So if I take that away, you'll see the graph start dying down a bit. Obviously on one side when it starts loading it in. There we go, if you look at those values they're much lower. Put that back there again. And it's jumping back up again. Right, let's get another sample. I won't keep bothering to show you of the phone, I'll do that in the full video, but let's just show you different samples making a spectrum on the uh, monitor itself. 
Right, so there's the monitor. I've set it this time to micro or just the Ronken per hour scale and you can see it says UR which is a micro. So what we're going to do now is expose it to some americinium 241. Was it 231? I can't remember off the top of my head. And there you go, it's definitely noticed that. Now it can't pick up the alpha from the americinium but it can pick up the gamma from it. But as you can see, that's definitely noticing that. Now, if we go to the spectrum mode again, you'll see that's changing its spectrum because it's noticing something completely different in terms of spikes. Right, let's get a different sample. So now we have a proper lab style cesium-137 check source. I think this is the most powerful type I could legally buy in the UK via import. That focuses. It's, you know, one of those proper lab type ones. So let's pop that on the counter. And we ignore the alarm, but what we should hopefully see is a spectrum change a bit in a moment, even without resetting it. Now obviously what you want to do is restart the accumulation for each new material if you know you're exposing it to it. Let's just see what some of the other things say while we're looking at this. So, the monitor thing says it's, yeah, sort of high end of the micro ronkens just coming up to a milli ronkens. Search mode obviously shows that since a little bit of back time where I didn't have a source next to it, it's now gone full on. But what you'll start seeing there, and I don't know how obvious it will be about restarting accumulation. Let's just quickly restart accumulation to see if it makes an obvious difference. I'll just do that from my phone. So what we want to do is um, go on the app. You can do this through the thing, but obviously you have to do a load of button presses. You want to go to um, restart accumulation. Yes, that should then make that go blank. There we go, yep. And you'll start seeing a very different kind of um, spectrum emerge. But yeah, you can definitely see the spectrum's very different on that. And if I just show you the phone one quickly. Oh look, it knows what it is. If I zoom it out. As you can see at the top, from the spike it knows it's cesium-137. Well, let's zoom in exactly on the um, phone bit at the top. But yeah, cesium-137, there we go. So yeah, I'll do a full-on review of this... Um, in a couple of weeks or so, and I've had the chance to play around a bit more, but yes, the Radio Code 102 is basically the Radio Code 101, but better, and I like the Radio Code 101. So, um, yeah.